imagine doing it and the entire thing is your moth tier for your bat mitzvah. It's very long. <laughs> Um, okay, well, it is 7.50, so we will get started. I'm actually not teaching this evening. I'm uh, I'm just doing Mincha, and then Rachel Cohn will be doing the teaching and the uh, and Mari Ben Havdala. So uh, I'm excited to be with you for the first few moments, and then uh, I will allow Rachel to take over. Shabbat Shalom. I was about to say Shavuot Tov. I'm getting ahead of myself. But Shabbat Shalom, Ed, and Shabbat Shalom, Gary. Uh, and Tybal, whose face I can't see, but whose voice I just heard. Uh, so we are going to begin on page 214 in the Lev Shalem, or page 226, or page 558 in the different Sim Shaloms uh, with Ashrei. Ashrei Ashrei Vetecha, Odi Halaluhu Chasela, Ashrei Ha'am Shekachalo, Ashrei Ha'am Adonai Elohav, Tehila Ledavid, Tehila to the Naya Daber P, Vivarech Kobas Rashim Kochole Lamva Ed, Vaanach Nudevarachia, Mea Tave Adolam, Hallelujah, Uvalet Sion, Goel of Shabbat Peshawayak of Nehman and Ivan Nehman to the Tamil. The attack Kadosh Yoshev Tilot Israel, the Karazel Zeve Amar, Kadosh Kadosh Kadosh, I don't know, it's Vaud, Melochla Haritz Kevado, Mikabin Ben Ribin. The Tisa Eni Ruach, the Shmacharai Korash Kadol, Baruch Kevalanai Mim Command, Tati Rashimati Vitaka. Adonai imloch leolam va'ed. Vive de Huvehayo de Shemecha, Kilo as after Dorshecha Adonai, Adonai Hafetz Laman Sitko, Yagdil Torah Veyadir. When I turn to the Torah service, I it's very bizarre to do a service with people in the morning where I did a full Torah service and then to be now reading Torah without a Torah service. I haven't done this in a long time. Um, and so it's lovely to, to be doing it again. And also a little bit funny that we're not going to be singing through an actual Torah service because uh, we go we go straight back to feeling like that is the normal. So we are reading from Parshat Chukat. Those of you who heard a little bit of the, the chatter at the beginning, uh, this was my Bat Mitzvah Haftarah. I believe also Annette Berman's Bat Mitzvah Haftarah. Um, it is from Shabbat Para. It is the Maftir. So my bat mitzvah was Parshat Kitisa, but Shabbat Para meant that I read these three aliyot as one aliyah for the maftir for Chukat. Um, and there's not really much more to say about it. I'm sure that Rachel has something to say about the Parsha as a whole, but this par these particular verses, we're talking about the Para Aduma, the red heifer. So uh, you'll hear probably more than you care to know about it uh, if you read along in the English or in the Hebrew. And again, it's Parshat Chukat, it's the beginning of the Parsha. So chapter 19 in Numbers in Bamidbar, ch chapter 19, verse 1, and we're going to go all the way through verse 17, though I'll pause in between Aliyot. Baruch ata Adonai, Elohim, Melech Alam, Asher Kedishanu, B'mitzvotav, Sivanu, La'asok, B'divrei Torah. 
Second Aliyah, and we'll let in Joel from the waiting room. Third It is really interesting. I don't know how many of you have had this experience, but it is really interesting that when you've learned a Parsha of Torah that you did over and over and over and over again, like you do for your bar or bat mitzvah, um, it just comes to you as muscle memory. <laughs> so much of that, though I was looking at the words and at the trope, much of it was just coming to me as words that I remember practicing uh, and knowing kind of how they fit in my mouth, which is a beautiful thing about reading Torah. So we're going to now turn to the silent uh, Mincha Amida, which can be found on page 223 or page 234 or page 574.
you've not yet finished your Amida, please continue at your own pace. We are now at the right before Kadish Shalem in your Sidur. I'm, oh, it is, I do have the pages. It's on page 230 or page 247 or page 596, most likely at the top of all those pages. Sit katka sedek leona, vetor chaheme, vit katra leona, marmasha rosita, chamacha sedeka. Adamo vema toshia adonai. If you're able to do so, please rise. Aleinu le shabayach ladon ha kola tet kivali, tere shishila, sana pigula, tere basalam tere shabayach. Vanach no karna mi sahavi, mo madi, me chimach machim, machim of the dash barakim. Mourners, Kaddish, page 232, page 249, or page 600. Ba'agala ubizman kari ve'imru amen. It barach ve yishtabach, ve yit paar ve yit romam ve yit nase, ve yit hadar ve yit ale ve yit halal shemei de kudesha brechum. Leila min kol birchata ve shirata, tush bechata ve nechemata de amiran ve alma ve imru amen. Yehe shalam a rabba min shemaya, ve chayim alenu ve al kol Israel ve imru amen. O se shalom mi ramav, hu ya ase shalom. Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'imru. Amen. I'll pass this over to Rachel, who's going to teach us a little bit about the Parsha. And in a few, I'll be able to stay for a few moments, but then in a few moments I'm going to leave you all to spend some time with my parents who are coming here. So I'll say in anticipation, Shavuot Tov, and uh, looking forward to learning with Rachel. Thank you, Rabbi Schatz. Uh, good evening, everyone. Pleasure to, to be with you. Uh, so I wanted to look at a part of this Parsha that has to do with a, a, a short and sort of spontaneous song that I had forgotten was in this Parsha. So before we get into that, let's just kind of jog our memories. What other songs do we read about in Tanakh? Any other songs you can, I think I have to unmute you, but. Do you mean things like Song at the Sea? Great. I mean, that's a great one. Um, I'm just kind of to the idea of just having these in our minds for comparison when we look at the text of this one. So great. The Song of the Sea. Um, very famous. We, you know, it's inserted into liturgy. Um, great. Any others folks can think of? Devora. Another great one. Um, I mean, th those are the two main ones that come to my mind, but um, do, do folks know of, of other ones? I mean, Moshe's kind of speech at the end is known as a song, um, but it's not, it's not one that we think of kind of in the same way that we think of the other two that have been mentioned. It's not, it's, I guess it's more poetry than, mm -hmm. than we think of it being actually, actually similar to Devorah, right? More poetry, less actual singing in celebration. Yeah. So, um, so I'll just encourage you to kind of think about, you know, like we've mentioned poetry celebration, the song of the sea is a very, you know, it's kind of like redemption song. Um, there's these different paradigms for what a song might be and reasons that, that people might be singing them. So we'll kind of like come back to that for comparison when we get to the song that appears in this, in this Parsha. Okay. So for context, before we get to the, the song piece, that's the, the crux of what I want to talk about. This is a Parsha where both, with both Miriam and, and Aaron die. And interestingly, we see explicitly some of the communal response to when Aaron dies. We hear that the community mourns him for 30 days. Closer to the beginning of the Parsha though, we read that Miriam dies 
And there's no explicit mention of how the community responds to her death, emotionally, spiritually. We, what we see is the, that there's you know, the verse that mentions that she dies. And then immediately after that, we read, so we're, if you have the source sheet, great. If you, if you don't have the source sheet, also great. We're in Numbers chapter 20, starting with just the first couple of verses. And then we'll kind of hop around through that, through chapter 20 and 21. So Numbers 20 verse two says, um, and there was no water for the congregation and they joined against Moses and Aaron. So suddenly after Miriam's death, we read that they're, they're out of water and people are understandably um, unhappy, displeased with that. So Rashi kind of fills us in, which we might've already been able to intuit from our, our knowledge of Miriam as the water, the water you know, person. Um, Rashi reminds us implied because it comes immediately following the statement of her death. We may learn from this, that during the entire 40 years, they had the well through Miriam's merit. So this adds some explanation. He's quoting a Midrash that there was this well associated with Miriam that fed them for, um, the 40 years. So a couple things though, to keep in mind about like the limitations of this Rashi commentary when he says the entire 40 years, we know from this Parsha that, that Miriam has died and Aaron has died. Moses has not yet died. If you think about the entire 40 years, the entirety of that has not happened yet. So what, this, what we're seeing in this Parsha, I think, is some of the ambiguity about what happens to give the people water in between the almost entirety of the 40 years where Miriam is alive and sustaining them with her, her presence with this well and after that. But the other kind of remaining question that I still have at least reading this Rashi is, um, is that he says, ha air the well, but there's still a lot of lack of clarity about exactly like, was this a well that, that other people physically built, but only was sustained because of her spiritual presence? Did she personally like dig it? Did, did God move it? Did people move it? Like, you, you know, it's kind of a logistically complicated thing to imagine that a literal well was going to be traveling with people for 40 years in the desert. So, so that's super cool. You know, I like, I love that, that she um, has this, this effect on the community that she brings them water for 40 years. There's still some questions in my mind about exactly what had been happening prior to her death. And then kind of even more questions about what's going to happen after she dies, which the people share clearly because they bring these concerns to Moses and Aaron. Okay. So back to our story, the people are, <clears throat> the people are disgruntled and then not on the source sheet, but just to kind of recap what's going on in the story of the Parsha, there's the famous incident that ends up getting, you know, where Moshe gets his punishment that, that keeps him out of seeing, you know, bringing the people to the promised land directly where people are complaining, says he and Aaron fall on their face, which I personally interpret as they're also like, they just lost their sister. And then they are dealing with a community of people who are now complaining to them about a physical need that may also be a spiritual need. So they don't know what to do either. And God gives these instructions that they're supposed to speak to a rock, gather the people, speak to the rock, it will provide water. So there's some talking, but then also Moses hits the rock Seems like a small difference, but, you know, was was a, a grave mistake in the context of this story. And and then God says, you you know, you didn't honor me sufficiently in front of the people. They sort of like you made me look bad in front of, you know, all my all my peeps. And um, and for this, you're going to pay the price of not getting to go into the promised land yourself. Um. We don't really, you know, there's, there isn't really a description of the response of like what, you know, Moses hearing that, how that happens. And, and you know, and Aaron too is going to, is going to die even before Moses does. So then they go on to dealing with some trying to get into the promised land itself and speaking to some local Kings and um, hitting a roadblock, having to reroute. And then where this song that we're going to read comes in is after having one seemingly miraculous military battle that does get them closer to their entrance to the promised land. So, um, so then we read, this is um, source three on the source sheet. Is there anybody who has the source sheet who would like to read 
source three. Uh, back rack family, whoever. <laughs> is okay, yeah. When Israel sang this song, spring up a oh, well song to it, song to sing to it. Then Israel sang the song, spring up a oh, well, sing to it. The well which the chieftains dug, which the nobles of the people started with maces and their own staff. And from Midbar to uh, Mat Matane, and from Matana to uh, Nihalel, Nihalel to Bamoth, from Bamoth to the valley that is in, the, in this country of Moab, and the, at, at the peak of Piscay, overlooking the wasteland. Okay, so that's the entirety of this song. Somewhat right. different from the, the other two songs we were referring to. Um, you know, like Song of the Sea, the Song of Devorah that have, are kind of easier, you know, you could like look at them as a unit and like parse them out a little more. This one's, it's kind of short and not super immediately poetic seeming to me, um, but, you know, kind of intriguing, which is what, you know, captivated my attention and wanted to look at it more. Okay, so let's, for starters, let's look at the opening line of it. Az Yashir Yisrael similarities, differences to um, like, let's think about Song of the Sea in particular in this moment. Well, isn't that when Az Yashir Moshe? Uvene Yisrael. Yeah. Right. Az Yashir Moshe, Uvene Yisrael, et Ashira Hazot, Ladoshem. Okay, so, so yes, yeah, so a couple differences. Moshe is absent. And then also at the end of that line in Song of the Sea, it says they sang this song to God. So absent from this is, is Moshe and this dedication to God. So like who, who, it's less clear what the purpose of this song is. Like it's not, it, I would think it's still kind of a, a song of thanks to God saying, oh, you got us through this, you know, this period of hardship dealing with the, you know, one of the Canaanite peoples and also um, this longer trek we've been on 40 years in the desert, but it's not, but it's not explicit. Um, and then like, it's, um, it's again, unclear when they say, um, you know, this song, um, about the air, like a well in general. So it's like also unclear what, um, what well they are singing about. So, um, what, if you're just reading this, you know, as is, what would you guess that they're singing, you know, which, which well do you think they're speaking about? <laughs> I'll say that these place names are supposed to be different places through their desert wanderings. Is it even, is it clear at all who, what well they might be speaking about? Yeah, Marlies? Well, I was just wondering if it was the previous one, one ones that you were talking about before with Miriam, because it was all that time with Miriam. I mean, I don't know about the place names. Personally, if this was from during the entire 40 years or, or what what the time frame is. It's not 100%. Um, Clear even in the commentary, like it seems like the, the gist of it is it's meant to it's meant to be over the course of the 40 years. Um, but it's if that's the case, it's it's surprising to me that Miriam isn't mentioned in the song either, right? Like they say, the well the chieftains dug, the nobles started it with maces, and then the, it names a bunch of places, but it says nothing about, you know, about Miriam's involvement. Um, Tybal? Well, the one in the on, on in this source sounds so concrete with places and who dug it, versus the Miriam sounds symbolic. Mm -hmm. So, say more about that. Like you, it, it makes sense to you that she's not named explicitly, or I, I don't know. I don't. I don't necessarily think that that. I don't know. But the whole idea of Torah is water. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. It just seems that whatever the Miriam is, if it went, if it wasn't tied to a place that makes it more ethereal, more symbolic, and not an actual thing that got dug in certain places by certain people. Gotcha. So you're saying her contribution may be kind of at an at another level than what this song is talking about. Sure. Or you can you can <laughs> you can <laughs> clarify more. Um, but you know, um, I, I hear that. I appreciate that. That the this song is talking about some very specific kind of technicalities of how the well came to be. It doesn't preclude her involvement in kind of nurturing the the continuation of that well. Okay, um, very cool. So that's like that's one possibility that they're talking about this same well with Miriam. The other possibility is that they're talking about some other spring or well. And the two main kind of branches that the commentaries take it are that. It, like, you know, like we've kind of already suggested that it's the same well from the whole 40 years, or that actually the springing forth of water, either in this situation, or there's a very similar story in, um, in Exodus chapter 17, I believe. I think it's Exodus chapter 17, another time where Moses does hit a rock and it's okay. Some biblical scholars think that it's kind of an echo of the same story with different editors, but taking it at face value, there was another time when Moses hit a rock and it was okay and water sprang forth. So sometimes the commentators are saying like, that's actually the spring that they're referring to is something that Moses directly, um, directly caused, but it's not, it's not 100% clear what exactly they're singing about here. So the, we'll kind of hold those two possibilities. And what it centers on, the difference in those two main interpretations are in um, what, the, what this translation translates as um, like started with maces. The Hebrew word is be-mechokek. And you can hear the word chok, law, in that word, mechokek. So one way of interpreting that is either that it's with a lawmaker and that's kind of interpreted as Moses needed to be involved or um, with like um, with a staff. And that's um, the interpretation more of like it came directly from the rock with him. Um, so interestingly, this one didn't make it onto the source sheet, but just, just to kind of elaborate on this, Rabbeinu Bachia says, his, his way of kind of understanding this is he says, after the death of Miriam, the well became reactivated only through the merit of the lawgiver, Moses. So he says, you know, it is kind of the same well, but Moses then took on an important role after the death of Miriam. So this kind of merges both understandings, perhaps if we're saying um, that they're singing this song for, you know, in gratitude for the well that Miriam gave that, you know, helped sustain for many years and in gratitude for Moses maybe taking over after she, um, after she died. Um, so just to kind of, oh yeah, Larry. Yeah, Rachel, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. So you, you've chosen two verses, one from the beginning of chapter 20. Mm -hmm. Chapters have no meaning, but, and then the other right. from the middle of chapter 21, they're actually separated by quite a bit of, of action. Yes. So we've got the death of Miriam, and then immediately we've got the people saying that they, there's, there's no water, and then the story of Moses um, making this pronouncement uh, to the people, "Watch me strike the rock, and you'll get right. water," and then God, and then God punishing him, and then following that, we've got a whole lot of interesting things that are happening about the trying the, trying to cross the uh, Edom and being refused, and then. Right. The king of Arad, and then they're they're marching from camp to camp, and then just the verse before it simply says, and then they get to Be'er, right, which is the well, and all of a sudden there's this song, right. and you're, you seem to be linking it to the original story about Moses striking the rock, and I'm just wondering why it's here and not there. Is this simply a, a question of biblical editing that the different versions got sort of pieced together? Or is this actually a different well and there's a different story and the song is related to a different story? Um, 
I admit I, I'm I'm really confused about this story uh, about the water stories, which are repeated back in Shemot and here, right. seem to be different versions of the same story. Yes. Um, and one more thing, if I can ask you one more question. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the Jerusalem Study Bible, and they've got two words I've never heard of. They write that, um, uh, talking about this song, it is an etiology for the toponym Be'er Well. And I don't know, I, th I can probably guess what a toponym is. It's when a place name is the name of yeah. the thing. Etiology, an et like a name origin story. Aha. Uh -huh. But I don't know what an etiology is. So that's that's the the story of the origin of the name, and then I guess what they're saying is the story of the origin of the place name. Like sometimes it's there's a story about why a person gets a certain name. In this case, it's kind of a story about why a, a place got a certain name. So right. So what what I'm raising this as a as a question, exactly what you pointed out, Larry, that there's kind of several different water situations going on here. And I'm pointing out that this song happened here, raising it as a question, given that um, in part, my wondering about it is that we don't hear of any formal mourning for Miriam. We know that, you know, there's some kind of echoes of the song of the sea in the introduction to this song, at least as how, you know, how I read it, Az Yashir Yisrael. I, it, it seems like it would probably be bringing them back the people who would sing this, while the initial inspiration might have been, you know, like the well at this, you know, site after they had a battle that they won, um, it seems like there could be so many other opportunities for them to have these many moments of like, yay, we've got water, that's great. So it's curious to me that in the same Parsha, when Miriam, you know, when Miriam dies, they have this, you know, this like little water thanks song that does mention places that are through, you know, throughout their 40 years of wandering. So, you know, part of my thinking is maybe like they had this one aha moment that caused them to sing, but it really kind of, it might've helped them process the death of Miriam who had sustained them for a much longer period of time. That's, that's kind of one of my theories about what's happening but I'm, I'm i'm raising it as a question because i think it's puzzling but just to well just one more point yeah just before that it refers to this the book of the wars of of, of adonai mm -hmm. and then we switch to the water the, to the water again briefly and then immediately we go back to the wars and just several verses later we got a much longer song that's a song about a victory i think which verses are you? Uh, it starts on, it's, it's, it's um, verse 27. There's a, the bards would recite. So it's a poem or a, it's, it, and it's, it's a, it's a longer um, poem or song. So it just, it just, I, I'm not criticizing what you're doing. I'm just, I'm questioning what, I'm, I'm confused because it seems to me like the text is all mixed up. Like little bits of scraps got thrown on the ground, and the editor picked them up and put them in an almost uh, random, not a random order, but didn't bother to put them together the way they should have been put together. So I, I agree that there's a seemingly odd editing thing, and without having <laughs> more particular insight into you know the who people think the editors are for this section, it does seem like there's some randomness. And even like I was saying before, the two stories about hitting the rock. I read one article that says those, we read them as like two different things. The one time Moshe hit the rock and it, and it was okay. And the next time he hit the rock and it wasn't okay. But some biblical scholars think it's actually just two different versions of the same story where the outcomes were very different for, for Moses. Um, so I don't think this is clarifying really much of what you have to say, except that, that yes, it seems kind of doesn't make logical sense in all in all cases. But but the reason, just to go back to my own thinking about this, what I was what I'm trying to highlight in this parsha is that through the different pieces of the story, there is this theme of needing water, celebrating water, um, singing about water, <laughs> and 
and like I said, if if Rashi's suggesting that Miriam had sustained them for almost the entirety of their 40 years, I think that, you know, I would think she deserves some praise for that. And I wonder if we can kind of kind of read that into this um, to this situation. So um, just to offer one other kind of I mentioned there's the two kind of trains of thought in the commentary since it's ambiguous, as you pointed out, like which the air they're speaking about. Is it something from, you know, the, the previous one that Moshe took over when Miriam died or, or a more recent localized event? Um, so um, there's the Rashi that we have on this page, source number four, when it says the well princes dug it, it means the well that Moses and Aaron dug. That, I mean, that doesn't even necessarily answer the question itself. I read that as saying they helped Miriam dig the initial well, but you could just as easily read it as, um, you know, that they dug a well like in the middle of this battle that they just won and that was the cause for the song. Okay, but the but the other line of thinking, the the that it could have been Moses striking something and that was a, a stream of its, of its own accord. Another commentary from Urbanu Bachia is, um, says, the reason that Moshe's name was left out of this song is that this very well was the cause of Moses having to, to end his mission of leading the people to the Holy Land. So that kind of suggests that, that Bahia is reading it as the, the spring that they're speaking about is the water that came out of the rock that caused him to, to have to not enter the Holy Land, which to me is like, is baffling that that's what, that they would be singing a song about that water, although they needed water and it was helpful that he got it, you know, he got it out in that case. Um, but again, Bahia is saying like the very well that was the cause of Moses having to, to end his mission of leading the Jewish people, the reason that he had to die and be, and be buried on foreign soil, like that's just an intriguing other read of what's going on here is that they're singing about Moshe getting them water from the very incident that caused him to have to, you know, not enter the Holy Land. You know, in, you know, like intriguing, that's, that explains why his name is left out of it maybe. And then he goes on to say that God basically didn't want to be in the song if Moshe couldn't be in the song <laughs> too. So they like agreed to, you know, it, it's that it compares it to a king who, who says like, I'm only gonna, if, if this other noble person isn't going to be at the party, then I'm not, then I'm not going either. Um, but I think the commentators are also perplexed by this because there's a couple different of these explanations that, that in my mind are not complete explanations. The one that I find the most reassuring or, you know, best piecing together the stories is, is the prior Bakke comment that I gave that I found after I made the source sheet. So this is like really the only one that I needed to put on the source sheet because it provides a bit of clarity was that after the death of Miriam, the well became reactivated only through um, the merit of, of Moshe. So the last commentary I have on the sheet is from Rashi saying that um, the last, the place names at the end of the song, that it ends with the country of Moab. The reason that it ends there is it says from that's where Moses died and that's where the well finally ceased to flow. So if we, if we continue with this interpretation, it seems like he's also in the camp thinking that Moshe took over the well when Miriam died and that it continued even until the, the death of, of Moshe. So we have maybe, maybe we can weave together a story here. There's a, there's a lot of ambiguity in this kind of um, cryptic small song that's inserted into this into this Parsha with many different pieces. The story that I personally am, am looking to read into it, part as my own like <laughs> connection to Miriam, I think if nothing else, is as I alluded to before, that there are many different moments when they've been in the desert and needing water and it appeared. I think it's intriguing that it appears in this Parsha where she died and I, we we can weave together this story of kind of there being this transitional moment where other people take over the leadership of providing water to the people, specifically um, Moshe, and provide some some continuity. And this song maybe can 
offer a bit of connection to the Song of the Sea, this other moment when she's not named, but I think celebrated um, and, and kind of honor that transitional moment of saying, we don't have Miriam's leadership anymore and we're still going to be sustained through water through this other leadership that's going to take over for her that may not be the same, but it's going to continue to sustain the people. So <laughs> um, it's, you know, a kind of bizarre and specific scenario described in the song, but I, I kind of, um, I think it can be connected to a larger narrative about transition for the, the people at this, at this stage in their, in their journey when they're facing like loss and transition of, of leadership. So any, any other quick thoughts, questions? Tybal? Um, it's just a funny one. I, it may be the Debbie Friedman, but mm -hmm. is El Na Rafana Law is not actually, there's nothing in the text that tells us it was sung. It's not yeah. a song, right? Mm -mm. So it's just Debbie Friedman. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's several different melodies for it, but in the text itself, it's something that, that Moses, you know, like cries out to God, but it's, it doesn't appear as a song. A song. Yeah. And I had a question for Larry, cause he said Jerusalem study Bible. And I thought that was a, I mean, people may still use it, but I thought the Jerusalem one was, was a more Christian source. No, it's uh, the Jewish, if I said that, oh, it's, it's, completely, it's called the Jewish Study Bible. The uh, Adele Berlin one? Uh, I'll tell you the truth. I don't know the names of the different yeah. editors. Yeah, got, got it. I, then it's I Adele Berlin. I, Adele, yeah, Adele Berlin and, um, and Mark V. Brettler. Then I, I think I misheard you. Never mind, because the Jerusalem is a Christian. Uh, Never mind. It's Christian, so I thought, oh, that's an interesting source. But Jew Jewish study Bible, it's a good one. Um, it's got right. very thin pages, so it's really. I was about to, to say use. it's very hard if you don't have fine motor control not to rip the pages. Yeah, it's, it's, yes, it's weighty at, with knowledge and and <laughs> and size. <laughs> Um, uh, well, thank you everybody for, for learning together. Um, <clears throat> I hope we can find other, there's probably other small songs hidden in different parts of Tanakh that I'm going to be on the lookout for now too. Uh, so we can transition to our Mariv service beginning on 264 in Lev Shalem or 281 or 200 in the different Sim Shalom volumes. Vehu rachum yacha peravon velo yashlit, vehir balashiv, apo velo ya ir kol hamato, Adonai hoshia hamelach ya anenu veyom korenu. Umavir yomu may be lila, umav deal ben yomu ben lila, Adonai tivaho chemo. El Chai Vekayam Tamidim Lokalinu Leolam Ba'ed Baruch Atah Adonai Hama'ari Varavim Ahavat Olam Beit Yisrael Ve'ahavat Echa Al Tesir Mimenu Leolamim Baruch atah Adonai, Ohev Amoho Yisrael. El Melech Ne'eman, Shema Yisrael. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad.
אני אדוני אלוהיכם, אמת ואמונה כל זאת וקיים עלינו. ומלכותו ברצון קיבלו עליהם משה ומרים ובני ישראל לכאנו שירה בשמחה רבה ואמרו כולם מי כמוך באלים אדוני מי כמוך נדר בקודש לא רעת היא לא תוסף אלה מלכותך ראו בנחה בוקי הים לפני משה זה אליינו ואמרו אדוני ימלוך לעולם בעת ונאמר כי פדה אדוני את יעקב וגאה לו מיד חזק ממנו ברוך אתה אדוני גל ישראל. השכיבנו פיג' 267, 284 או 206. השכיבנו אדוני אלוהינו לשלום והעמידנו מלכנו לחיים ושמור צאתנו ובואנו לחיים ולשלום מעתה ועד עולם ברוך אתה אדוני שומר עמו ישראל לעד. We will skip the חצי קדיש, oh sorry. כי המלכות שלך היא ולעולמי עדים לך בכבוד כי אין לנו מלך אלא אתה ברוך אתה אדוני המלך בכבודו תמיד ימלוך עלינו לעולם בעד ועל כל מעשיו. We will now skip the Hatsi Kaddish and go to the whispered Amidza and with the included sections for the conclusion of Shabbat.
Verses at the end of Shabbat. And uh, if you're still continuing with your Amidah, of course, feel free to continue at your own pace. Yikra eni ve ene hu imo anochi vitsara, achal se hu ve achabdehu, orechemim aspiehu ve arehu bishuati, orechemim aspiehu ve arehu bishuati. Ve atakadosh your shape to hilo, Yisrael, the karaze al zevamar. Kadosh 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 Adonai Tzavahut Meloch Olar Etz Kivodo Batisa Eni Ruach Ve'eshma Acharei Kol Rash Gadol Baruch Kavod Adonai Mim Komo Adonai Him Loch Le'olam Va'ed We will now continue with the Alenu <clears throat> on 281, 297, or 696. Alenu le Shabbat Adon Hakol Ha'Tet Gula Leotzer Reshit. Aka tu betora teha, donai him loch leo lamba head, bene emar behaya donai, lemelech al koharet, bayom ha hui ye, adonai ye hadushemo ye had. Kadish yatom, mourners Kaddish, two eighty two, two ninety eight, or six ninety eight. Yitz Gadal v'yitz Kadash Shemei Raba, the Alma Divrach Kirute v'yamlich Machute, the Chayechon u'v'yomechon u'chaye dechol Beit Yisrael v'agala u'bizman kariv v'imru. Amen. Yehi Shemei Raba mevarach le'alam u'lalme almaya. Yitz Barach v'yitz Sabach v'yitz Pa'ar v'yitz Romam v'yitz Nase, v'yitz Hadar v'yitz Alev v'yitz Halal Shemei Dekudisha Brichu. The Ela min kol birchata veshirata, tush bechata venechamata, da amiran bealma ve imru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya, the chayim alenu veal kol Yisrael ve imru amen. O se shalom bim romav, huya ase shalom alenu veal kol Yisrael ve imru amen. It is 
I think we might have like one minute to wait, but it is uh, time for Havdalah now. So I will get my things ready. And if you need to gather your things, we have a minute for you to do so as well.